You don't have anything like this in your showcases. I know you have a Patriots ring, but you don't have that Patriots ring. For centuries, people have used barter, exchange, and pawning for quick money practices. And pawning for quick money. Practices still relevant today. Thanks to the hit TV series Pawn Stars, Rick Harrison, the show's owner and star, Harrison shares his journey from a sickly child with a passion for history to a successful entrepreneur. I was a businessman long before I was a celebrity, he said, emphasizing the innovation and perseverance required to succeed for over 20 years. From laying off staff during tough times to working around the clock, even rewiring the shop himself. In this video, we'll talk about how he blew through his $18 million fortune. Pawn Stars, the hit TV show that premiered in 2009, originated from the gold and silver pawn shop in Las Vegas, catapulting the Harrison family to fame and success. The show's evolution from a local pawn shop to a History Channel sensation, featuring unique items and colorful characters, has captivated audiences. Alongside the show, Rick Harrison's life's milestones included his divorce, remarriage, and engagement, as well as ventures beyond the show, such as book releases, commercial, and commercial appearances. The Harrison family faced tragedy with the passing of Richard Harrison, the beloved old man bringing a period of mourning and increased responsibility. Rick also faced challenges due to the COVID-19 pandemic, which led to partial closure and financial struggles for the pawn shop, compounded by personal difficulties, including a divorce and legal disputes with his mother over family assets. Of course, with the good comes the bad. Rick Harrison admits to not being immune to mistakes. Noting that, in business you have to be innovative, but so are crooks. He confessed that getting lazy a few times led to significant losses on fake Rolexes. On a more personal note, Harrison enjoys collecting unusual items. Recently, he acquired a rare colored map from the 1650s depicting the island of California. While such a map might not appeal to everyone, Harrison's journey showcasing a unique approach to wealth and celebrity status built through physical assets like gold, silver, business real estate, and historical artifacts, offering a stark contrast to conventional 401k investments. His story of rising from a challenging childhood to entrepreneurial success is inspiring, emphasizing the value of quality. Harrison leaves aspiring treasure hunters with his advice. When you come across something and its quality is just outrageous, that's probably something of value. It's been the way for hundreds and hundreds of years. The really, really expensive stuff is also really, really high quality. In 1981, Rick Harrison and his father opened the gold and silver coin shop in the modest 300 square foot space in Las Vegas. A hustler from an early on age, Harrison worked at the store in the mornings and repossessed cars at night. After five years, they moved to a larger location on Fremont Street, but lost their lease two years later. Competing against larger, nation competing against larger nationwide pawn chains, Harrison achieved early success by targeting a niche market. As a small business owner with big competition, we had to figure out a way to be different. We invited people to sell their rare and unusual items at our shop, which eventually led corporate pawn shops to refer customers with unique items to them. Harrison's knack for spotting fakes helped grow the business. While details of his investments are scarce, in March of 2021, he sold his two-story, five-bedroom home in Bedrock County for $3.15 million having listed it for nearly $4 million in 2019. Among his most expensive purchases is a 1932 Lincoln Roadster, a rare and highly coveted classic car that exemplifies automotive history. I got a call from a guy who wants to sell his classic 1932 Ford. I'm always down to see a classic car, so Corey and I are going to go check it out. The body came out of Detroit, the front end, the frame, the brakes, the wheels, that's all SoCal. All right, so it's a 32 Ford, but there's nothing 1932. No. It looks nice. The body and the paint looks really clean. Do you have any miles on it? It's got 450 miles. Wow. The top is chopped about six inches, and it's made for us short guys. When it comes to hot rods, the word chop originally meant removing anything on the car to make the car lighter. One thing that concerns me is, would we be able to fit in that thing? Yeah, let's try it. <laughs> I feel like a sardine in this thing. I'm good. You mind if I start it up? Yeah. So what are you looking to get out of it, man? I have 140 in it. This thing looks flawless, and there is a market for cars like this. But the guy is talking some big numbers. As much as I love it, I got to get an expert's opinion before I can make a real offer. I think I love it, <laughs> to be honest with you. You know, Danny, we uh, brought you down here because hopefully you could find something wrong with this thing. Just Can we take it for a spin? Yep. <laughs> the 
test drive was awesome. They knew exactly how this car should feel going down the road. Somebody came to my shop and, and wanted this built. This is a $125,000, $135,000 build. I don't want to be a downer here, but there's no way in the world that you're ever going to recoup the money that you've got in this. It's the type of thing that you do out of love. What is your best rock bottom price? 65? All right, 68,250. All right, we got a deal, man. Thank you. Another significant investment includes a Super Bowl ring valued for its exclusivity and the prestige it carries. I want to sell a ring today. OK. Holy. Got the mother of all Super Bowl rings. Came to the pawn shop today to sell my 2004 Patriots ring. It's the biggest, sweetest, coolest ring that you're probably ever going to see. So what, you loaned him some money or something like that? Yeah. This thing weighs a ton. Well, it's from Super Bowl 39. It's when they beat the Eagles. Only the second team in history ever to achieve that level of dominance. OK, do you mind if I take a good look at it? Take your time. No, I mean, this one looks hand engraved. Jeff, bring me my Patriots ring. I'm sort of a nut for championship rings. This looks like it's in sloppy hand engraving. I mean, the, the, the workmanship and everything looks wonderful. So there's no way I'm making an offer until I can have this thing authenticated. So how much were you looking to get out of it? I was in the mid to low 20s. Manufacturer's mark doesn't look right. So I called in my buddy who's an expert to take a look. Now, rings that are given to players are far more valuable than if they're given to a front office staff member or something. It's cast in 14K white gold. It's got 124 diamonds. And also, it says three out of four. OK, I see we got uh, Justin's. Usually, you would see that in a, not only in a different location, but it looks to be actually hand engraved rather than actually out of the machine. They put so much into this ring, gold, diamonds, and everything. This thing was so enormous, it didn't fit inside Jocelyn's normal ring engraver. It's loaded with gold and diamonds. Super Bowl rings from players such as this sell from about thirty dollars to $35,000. Nice. So how much do you want for this thing? 22000 You don't have anything like this in your showcases. I know you have a Patriots ring, but you don't have that Patriots ring. Just because I need a Super Bowl ring for every one of my fingers. Deal. Deal. All right, write him up, chum. These high ticket items highlight Harrison's keen eye for quality and his willingness to invest in pieces of substantial historical and cultural value, further solidifying his reputation as a discerning collector and successful businessman. Harrison has spent millions on expensive items featured on his show, often venturing into six figure territories for unique and valuable pieces. His notable purchases include classic cars, rare historical artifacts, and one-of-a-kind collectibles, reflecting his deep appreciation for quality and rarity. However, this high-stakes environment comes with a significant risk. Harrison has admitted to losing substantial sums due to sophisticated fakes and misjudgments. For instance, he once lost big money on counterfeit Rolexes. When I first started working the night shift, I didn't have that much experience here, and it must have got around town pretty quick because I bought six fake Rolexes in one week illustrating the constant challenge of verifying authenticity in the pawn business. Despite these setbacks, Harrison's willingness to invest heavily in remarkable items underscores his commitment to maintaining a diverse and intriguing inventory at his shop. Experts and friends have played a crucial role in Rick Harrison's success, both on Pawn Stars and in his personal life, preventing potential financial disasters. On the show, a network of trusted experts frequently assist Harrison in authenticating and valuing rare items ensuring he avoids costly mistakes. Specialists in various fields from antique arms to classic cars provide essential insight that guide his purchasing decisions, saving him from substantial loss. Off screen, Harrison's close friends and family have offered support and advice, helping him navigate personal and professional challenges. This collective wisdom and support system have been instrumental in safeguarding Harrison's wealth and well-being allowing him to thrive despite the inherent risks of pawn business. Like many celebrities, Rick Harrison's life isn't free from controversies. His mother, Joanne Harrison, sued him over family assets and ownership of the gold and silver pawn shop, alleging that while she was in the coma around 2000 or 2001, she was forced to sign over her 51% stake in the shop. She further claimed that after her husband, Richard Harrison, the old man from Pawn Stars, passed away in 2018, she inherited his 49% share but received no documentation of her finances from Rick. Although Rick dispersed some money to her monthly post-2018, these payments ceased during the COVID-19 pandemic in March of 2020. Rick denied any wrongdoing, stating, I can say that the allegations are false, and I think that my 81-year-old mother is being manipulated by others for their personal gain. 
In the past, his pawn shop also faced controversy for legally melting down stolen gold coins. Just like any other celebrity, there are plenty of learnings from Rick Harrison's life, starting with his determination and never say die attitude. His resolve forms the backbone of his success, providing a valuable lesson to all of us. Knowing he wanted to launch a pawn shop, he tenaciously pursued a license, calling the city statisticians repeatedly until he secured it for $50, saving a million dollars and setting the stage for an incredible career. Harrison didn't back down when his dreams of a reality TV show seemed out of reach, pitching his idea to over a dozen production houses despite constant rejection. Even when his father doubted him, Harrison persisted, famously saying, Everyone kept telling me, you know, no one wants to watch four fat guys in a pawn shop. His persistence and the History Channel's faith paid off, with Pawn Stars becoming the highest rated premiere in the channel's history and the leading show on cable within a year. Harrison's journey from pawn shop owner to television star is a testament to persistence and exploring new avenues to achieve great success.